more testing one two three test one two three Okay, recap uh, what we learned before the break. We are learning how to change uh, AMU, average aponic mass, into gram. All right. Second example, recap what we learned. We're given a scenario where we have an intermetallic compound giving U N I sub X A L sub Y. And it gives you X and Y, they are integer, means they are full number. Consists of 42.04 weight percentage. WT means weight percentage. Nickel and 57.96 weight percentage, aluminium. What is the simplest formula for this nickel? Aluminite. You are given weight percentage. You need to find what is the x and y. This is solving linear equation, simultaneous equation. So we first assume that we have 100 gram. You can have one kilo also, but uh, usually for material, we won't use one kilo material, but we'll go into very simple unit, you use gram. So we use 100 gram. So in 100 gram, how many uh, nickel you have? If based on percentage here. How many nickel you have? If you have 100 gram of a compound means you mix nickel and uh, aluminum together. So how many nickel you have? 42.04 gram for nickel. And how many aluminum we have? 57.96 gram. So from here, your first assumption is important. Huh? You are using 100 gram. Then from there, you have the unit of gram. When you have a, you have a unit of gram, you refer to periodic table. You can find your X and Y. So you have so and so gram for nickel so and so for aluminium refer periodic table so if you if you have periodic table that i show you just now all right you refer to periodic table huh? this one huh? the one that you we i will show you before the break so one more of uh, nickel you have so you have nickel and aluminium huh? So on a periodic table, where is nickel? You find an I. Aluminium is here. So aluminium is 26.98. Nickel is 58.69. Ah, so you capture these two values, go back to your solution. We have these two numbers. So 42.04 gram nickel, how many more you have? One more of nickel, you have 58.96 gram. Now you have 42.04 gram, how many more you have? You take the number, nickel, you divide, right? You take this one, divide by this one, you get how many more you have. Make sense? We only involve a simple mathematics. Huh? Only you need to recall simultaneous equation, uh, simple logic, and so on. So you have 0 0.7 something more for nickel. You do the same for aluminium. You take this one divided by this one. You get 2.148 more. So both in, in more. Then the question tell you the value you can straight away put ni 0 0.716 
aluminium 2.148, but the, tell, the question tell you X and Y is a full number. You need to change this one into full number. How you change into full number? Total, you have 2.86 more. Right, total you have uh, nickel plus uh, aluminium. Total you have two point eight more. So since you have a total more, you have the element more. You take this one, divide by this one, you get a certain number, certain percentage, and change it to percentage lah. So fraction, you take this one divided by this one. Nickel zero point seven divided by two point eight, you get zero point two five. Of course, here you can predict the aluminium. La. Aluminium will be 0 0.75. It will be 100%. It must have, it must be 100%. All right. So you get 0 0.75. You can do simplification, right? Oops. So this basically is one and three. Means one of nickel uh, ratio. La. You do the ratio. Means you have one. Uh, aluminum will be in three times of uh, nickel. So you convert Ni 0 0.25 or uh, 0 0.75 to full number. So you have Ni one aluminum three. Okay, so when you go home, look at this question and ask yourself, when the question give you a compound, let's say Ni and L3, are you able to recalculate back? How you recalculate back in the production floor, where you mix a certain amount of element, certain amount of element become that compound. Okay. Try to train yourself to think how we ask you question in the test of final answer. Okay. And in your assessment, we will, we will never ask you something that you didn't learn in class. You just flip the question. Okay. Try to think like how do how do your lecturer ask you or test you? Same concept, but we reverse it. Are you able to do backwards? Because you are you are you are taking degree and you you become the engineer. You are not technician. So engineer, we want you to able to think and analyze things. Technician, you just ask them to do. You just solve based on engineer instruction. But you are a future engineer. You have to think what happened, what solution here. What is the problem here? How, how do I solve it? Okay. Any question to calculate uh, AMU, gram, and a uh, percentage of uh, compound and so on? Okay, yeah? quite straightforward. Huh? Okay. Next, we go into section two or uh, section three. Uh, we go into electronic structure already. Okay, like next chapter, we have uh, two quantum. One is a Planck quantum theory and electromagnetic radiation. So these are a few history la. I won't ask you. One constant value that we expected you to know by heart is a speed of light, C. So if you study quantum physics or electromagnetic radiation, second one is the speed of light. Okay, number of Avogadro, we did learn speed of light is the second half uh, value that you should uh, know. Speed of light C is 3, 10, power negative 8 meter per second in vacuum. This value, speed of light, also won't be given in the final exam and also your tests. 
you assume you to know this value. Okay. I think you you will repeat you will frequently use this value for your analysis. Okay. Now, if you talk about radiation, uh, why do we learn radiation? Because when we talk about atomic, when you mix metal together, metal have electron and so on. So there's a radiation there. Or electromagnetic there. So what influence the radiation or electromagnetic wave? Wavelength, frequency, and speed. So later we'll do calculation. Calculate wavelength, frequency, and speed. Wavelength lambda. Frequency f. Frequency is one over time, or one over t, or one over t. Speed, you know, V in a unit of meter per second. Okay. That is in meter. This is in second. Sorry, second minus one. Or hertz. Okay. Second equation. C equal to frequency multiplied by lambda. Speed of light will equal to frequency multiplied by your wavelength. Again, C we assume you to know. We we'll use the standard value of C throughout this module. You'll be given either frequency or you find the frequency or you find the lambda wavelength. Okay. Then we will give you a chart or spectrum of frequency. Then you, based on what you see in the question or in the table, you predict what is this. All right. So for example, the one you see on the screen here, you have a wavelength number, you have a frequency number, you have type of radiation. So based on wavelength and frequency, it means based on these two parameters, you predict the radiation. Again, this one will give you a chart to do. For information, your assignment, there's one question come out, this one. Yeah? Okay. So, for example, if you fall into these two number, you combine, you get a certain number, you know that this is under, either it's X-ray or visible light or radio frequency. Yeah? Uh, this chart requires full spectrum, means a known frequency from uh, X-ray, gamma ray into radio wave. Uh, the one that you see with your eyes is visible light which is in this frequency. Then later there's one more chart that I will extend this visible light into colors. Visible light have colors. So you will see in your section C there, in your question, you do calculation, then C will ask you what light, what color of, or what will you observe based on your analysis. Either it's a red light, it's a bright, uh, blue light, and so on, or it's an audible sound in frequency, and so on, or it will bring harm because it's fall under X ray category. Okay, so this is the light spectrum where. We extend this visible spectrum here into this one. So based on your answer, frequency and lambda, frequency and uh, wavelength, you see that? Well, where is your frequency? Either you use a frequency or wavelength, you get uh, frequency and uh, wavelength. They are go by parallel one. Uh. Actually, they go synchronized one. Uh. 
So let's say you get a red light, a red color spectrum. You will get around 55 or something or somewhere here. Right? This one is in terabyte or tera. This one is in nano, nanometer. And then this will be the one that you need to find uh, in the later chapter. We call it proton energy EV. This one here. Okay. This one, another chart. Same, uh, same one. I just give you, there's a few version. You can see the concept still same. So you, you have a rainbow color here. On the left will be ultraviolet, on the right will be infrared. The application of infrared here will be all the remote control that you have in your house. The car keys, remote control, everything is here. Right? Okay. Um, second equation. Energy of a single quantum energy E will be frequency times the constant value H. Constant value H is called Planck constant. Also, H won't be given. You need to memorize. Planck constant, H 6.63, 10 power negative 34. Dot S, huh? Okay. So from here, you can form the equation of speed of light, C equal to F multiplied by lambda, and the uh, energy equation. These two, you can rewrite the energy equation in terms of frequency and lambda, or oh, sorry, in the lambda and uh, speed of light. So from here, it transforms into New equation. So you have energy of a single quantum energy. You use the Planck constant, speed of light, and lambda. You can find the energy. Yeah? Then we use one example. We use hydrogen. Hydrogen atom. So this is a Bohr's model again. Bohr's model with the nucleus and electron. So there are two scenarios. Either you receive energy or you receive and uh, give energy. So if you receive energy, your electron will have more energy. It will go up. It will not go in, right? So your electron, when it receives energy, it will go outside the orbit. When it loses energy or it gives energy, it will move back. Okay, and it stay at that orbit. So the first one is when energy absorbed by that element, the electron will move to next orbit. Okay, so the energy will deal with the orbit. Eh? This E will link to orbit. Either it moves up or moves down. Okay. So energy uh, emitted means it's, uh, it keeps energy or it let go energy. So Okay, nah? So the it's a change of orbit. You give you, you, the element absorb energy, it release, it will change what, what changes is the electron. Electron will move out of orbit. And the uh, element uh, lose some energy, or we call it energy emitted. Then electron move from outside orbit into inner orbit. 
Okay. It's like you're driving car. La. Highway got a few lane. La. So if you have high energy, you are at the outside energy, uh, outside lane. So if you, have, you want to draw, you want to go slow, you move inside lane. Same as you're driving. We first introduce you number of orbit. N equal to one means the first orbit. And is the closest to the nucleus, which is N equal one. And so on, yeah. So N equal one is a ground state. It's a ground state. So uh, where you, when or where you will see this term is in the question, it will tell you, Calculate the energy given to uh, need to be given to this element to make electron move from a certain orbit to ground state or from ground state to a certain orbit. Ground state means it's from orbit number one, it's closest to the uh, nucleus there. Okay, yeah. One assumption, one assumption in your calculation is that the energy that it need to move from one orbit to another orbit is the same. So let's say this is n equal one, n equal two. If this electron move to orbit number two, it require, let's say, uh, a certain value, Joe. When it move back, let's say I put the A value. It move back from two to one, it also require A energy, same magnitude. Yeah. So when an energy was released or emitted the radiation that you see is called photon. The energy released or emitted is called photon. Don't mix with proton. Eh? This is photon. This is another chart where sometimes you will see in your assessment. So how to read this chart? This column or vertical column or y-axis is your energy. Energy in the unit of EV. Uh, e, it means electron something. V, volt. EV, it means energy. You can see the unit of EV, it means energy. All right, so energy, uh, be careful on the negative sign. Some students, they confuse. Huh? The more negative is below there, and then it go up, it become less and less negative. All right. Okay, and then on the right-hand side, okay, that one later. Huh? The one you see here is N1, which is a ground state. N equal two, orbit number two, N equal three, orbit number three. At the moment, don't uh, see this one first. Because uh, later you will, you will see how many lane inside the orbit. Yeah. This one you read, huh? Okay, let's say orbit one to orbit two, you need a certain energy, right? How you find the energy? 
you compare the value between this one and this one, you get the energy need for the electron to jump from n equal 1 to 2. You take this value and this value, the, va the, the value difference is the energy needed for the electron to jump from n equal 1 to n equal 2 or make the electron move back to the ground state. Okay, so this scientist Bohr, he's, he's a developed a model to determine the allowed energy for hydrogen electron. We are looking at hydrogen, depend on the quantum state n. So again, n equal one is ground state, n equal two, uh, it give a name that this is a Bay Bohmer. Uh, each state you have give a certain name. Huh? So n equal three, Hustian, n equal four, Bratchett, five is P fun. Or fun. Huh? P sometimes you don't read the P word. Uh, uh. So what does it mean? It means that um, it means that from Number of n fall back to if you fall back to n equal two, it called Bamer uh, state. If anything fall back to n equal three, it called Pastian state. Anything fall back to n equal four, it called Bratchett state, and so on. Huh? we study up to n equal five. Understand? Huh? Understand? Don't know. Can I? Let me know if you confuse that. Huh? How this chart will come up in a test or exam? When you calculate the energy, you know that this electron fall from orbit number how many until how many? Make sense? Then from there, you tell you make a conclusion in. Section C, what is this behavior? It is a bomber, it is a passion or bracket of, of fun. So the third equation to calculate energy developed by Bose or Bose energy equation give you E equal to minus two pi square and e power four n square h square in short huh? in short you don't in short you just need you to use a constant value for normal case you take 13.6 divided by n square And a constant value, 1 EV equal to 1.60, 10 minus 1.90. So. Where's the attendance list? Attendance list. What's his name? Huh? Sure. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Kashin, just now you go out. Huh? Go back and listen to the lecture video. What I mean by all these themes? Huh? Okay. Uh, Okay, so far for energy, we have come through. We have uh, come through a few equation. First is speed of light linked with the frequency and uh, wavelength, f lambda, and then we introduce you the energy equation, frequency times the Planck uh, 
constant. And then uh, normally in a question, we won't straight give you the frequency. You need to find the frequency. Usually you'll be given speed of light. Speed of light you memorize and the lambda will be given. So from here, you're able to find the energy. Then after that, uh, based on the energy for hydrogen electron, uh, uh, boss already give you one simple equation here. 13.6 divided by n2 n square. n is the number of uh, orbit. Huh? So the rest you read. The lower it go, the more negative it will be. Okay, the number. If you go lower and lower, the energy will be negative value. As you can see on the table here, on the chart here, the higher it go, the become more and more positive. But if you go from outside orbit, you want to pull the electron from outside back to the nearer to the nucleus, then you need more energy. Okay. The more to the ground state, you need more energy, no? negative something. Okay. Okay. So one term is called ionization energy. Means ionize means you release the electron outside. You want to release the, the electron. So there's one term called minimum energy. Um, by using this one, uh, this is the equation for hydrogen. So this one to calculate the minimum energy to release or ionization to happen. So for example, when you end to two, the energy you need to and to for the ionization to happen is 3.4 eV. How do you get 3.4 eV? You substitute n here. n equal to, you press calculator, you get negative 3.4 eV. And there's a negative sign there. Energy, here is a negative sign. Remember, huh? there's a negative sign there. So same, if you want to find at the ground state, you just substitute n equal to 1, so you get 13.6 eV. If you want to get n3 and so on, n equal 5, you just substitute n equal 5, you get the energy at that level. Okay, so sometimes this equation also won't be given. It will ask you to find the minimum ionization energy for that particular orbit. Right? Okay, so how do we judge whether it is absorbed or released? So if the change of energy is more than positive, or mean positive value, the energy is absorbed. If the change of energy is negative, then energy is released. What does it mean? Let's say this is N2, N3. Let's say your electron at orbit 2. How you want to move from 2 to 3? You give energy, right? You give energy, then it will jump. You want to pull back? Absorb the energy. This one back. You lose energy, then it moves down. Again, imagine you are driving on a highway. You want to move faster, you move to the outer lane. You want to move slower, you, you, you just release the pedal, fuel pedal. You move to the inner lane. This statement is important when solving test one or test two and even final exam question. You need to, when you do calculation or 
after you do calculation, normally this equation or this solution will be in section C. What does the value E mean? After you calculate, you calculate delta E. What does it mean? So you need to copy this statement, put into an answer. You need to write delta E positive or you straight away copy the form that you see on the screen here. Delta E more than positive or more than zero, it means energy of salt. Less than zero or negative is energy released. So in this case, the element was having what? So you, you based on the number, you calculate, then you draw something in your in your answer. You draw two line, put an electron there, label and the so and so. Then you explain it. Okay. Then from here, you know whether this is Balmer behavior, Pustion, bracket, uh, fun or P fun. Okay, or ground state or return to ground state. Then, uh, okay. So change of E, I did explain. You take the final minus the initial. So it depends on the state. Final state minus the initial state. So you put the false equation with its minus one point one uh one three point six divided by n two. You arrive at one equation. So you have that equation. Minus 13.6. Don't forget the minus sign. All right. So there's a negative sign here in the bracket, negative sign outside the bracket. Okay. Some students, when they come to final, they panic. They will forget about the negative sign. Then they get negative value and they make the wrong assumption, uh, make a, a wrong judgment. Okay, so this is example. Uh, so what happened if you energy uh, jump from two to one, jump from here to here, right? So if you're given from two n equal 2 to n equal 1, the energy, I mean, uh, early early judgment is what? Absorb or release? Get more energy or release energy? Huh? Release, huh? Release, huh? Because it takes from outer lane into inner lane, so you need to slow down. So less energy, you need to, like, give less energy. So, the step of calculation, delta A equal to E2 minus E1. Take this equation. So from final, initial, final is 1. Uh, initial is 2. You press calculator, you get minus 10.2 EV. This, from this chart, you take... Uh, this one minus this one. This one minus 13.6 minus minus 3.4 is positive. Huh? Minus 13.6 minus minus 3.4, you get 10.2. But this is from the table, it's from the chart. But based on calculation, you use Ball's equation, you can find the value. Unit is EV. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So again, this statement important. Huh? This statement important. Always write this one. This one will, will give you some marks. This one is a free mark. Huh? You write this one, you sure get one or two marks here. These two, write these two. Huh? Don't write this one or miss out this one. Write these two. 
This one, one mark. This one, one mark. Three mark. Three mark here, dear. Okay. So when it's negative, means energy release. Means you calculate section B. Then section C, you write these two statement. You conclude negative less than zero energy release. One point, one point. This one, one more point. Or maybe this one is two marks. Only this small statement here. Okay, one mark, one mark, and then two mark, four mark. Okay, then in the calculation, normally uh, general equation will give you one mark. This one, one mark. Then this uh, calculation or substitution may be two marks. Then this one answer two marks. So one mark, two mark, two mark, about five marks here. Then if you need to draw then another three marks. There. If it asks you to give you a draft uh, behavior. Okay, then change of energy. Uh, delta E is a change of lane, but when it comes to Wavelength or proton, we learned just now. We have the energy equal to speed of light divided by lambda times the Planck uh, constant, which is 6.6, 10 power negative 4, uh, negative 34. You rearrange, you get the lambda. Lambda for proton means there's a radiation happen. You substitute the value. So the plank will be Joe second. I think I missed out the Joe there just now in my slides. Okay, make correction in my slides. Huh? The plank uh, value just now, I miss out the Joe value there. So you have the speed of light with the 3, 10 power 8 meter per second divided by the energy that you calculate just now. Energy value we do not get we do not uh, we do not carry the negative sign but we just take the magnitude okay we just take the magnitude and then multiply by the Planck uh, constant we get one two zero nanometer this is nano then negative nine so you get the lambda you get this value compared to the spectrum. Uh, table just now okay just now so lambda one two zero nano so you go to here this is in nanometer one two zero is where about here this is hundred this is ten ten naked ten power two it is hundred so about here lah. okay then you draw a line down it is on the left side of visible light, right? You draw a line, it's on the left side of the visible light, so you're unable to see it. So it's uh, in the ultraviolet uh, region. So it's uh, here to here is ultraviolet, like you can see towards the ultraviolet region. Okay, okay. We go one more example, then we stop. Okay, so example three. We learn or recap how do I apply what, what we learn in second half. Second half, we learn about uh, energy equation by using frequency lambda and also the energy either is released, uh, positive, uh, delta E positive, what does it mean? Delta E negative, what does it mean? And then, uh, and then there's a certain name for that uh n number so again in this three uh example three give you a uh, hydrogen atom it give you start from n3 electron undergo transition to n2 uh, like what i draw on the whiteboard here so it start from three go to two so you can just predict la, whether the energy is positive or negative already. La. 
Okay, from outside lane to inner lane, slow down. Means you release energy already. You let go energy. Make sense? Uh, so this is early prediction you should check. Uh, you should uh, able to understand. The question asks you to calculate energy of the photon, means radiation happened already. So it means if you change, then you need to refer to the table at the end, whether it's ultraviolet, it's a visible light or something else, infrared or something. So frequency is what, uh, wavelength is what, energy absorbed or emitted, this one by the statement, and uh, which series is belong and what type of emission does it represent. We just recap what we learned. To A, we use the energy. Again, this statement is important. Huh? Delta E, positive, what does it mean? Delta E less than zero, what does it mean? Three marks here. Okay, these are two free marks here. So this one, because it's moved from three to two, then energy will be released. So how to find energy of proton? Final minus initial. Or you can straight away use the equation, this one. You can straight away use minus 13.6. 1 over 2 F. This is for hydrogen. Eh? This is for hydrogen. Now, eh? this equation minus 13.6 bracket 1 over N minus 1 over N. This one is for hydrogen. Eh? If the scenario change to other element, go back to this equation. E equal to negative 2 pi square M E power 4 and so on. Use this one. This is for hydrogen. Eh? You substitute the value, and value, final is number two, initial is number three, press your calculator, you get minus 1.89 EV. You get the first answer for A. So you copy, uh, and then if the question asks you in the unit of Joe, again, don't forget, there's one more constant value you need to memorize. 1 EV equal to 1.60 10 negative 19 zo. But I think uh, in final or test, I think I will help you with this one. Okay. Uh, you arrive at this EV, you need to change into zo, means energy uh, generated or absorbed. So you just multiply, lah, huh? multiply. So if you multiply, you get in the unit of Joe. So EV, you get minus 9.8. EV, you multiply by this value, you get a new value with, in terms of Joe. Try to understand the solution steps. Don't chase after the numbers, right? Try to understand what, what we are trying to do here. Okay. Next, we go to frequency. You already found your energy in Joe. Uh, from here, important to when you talk about energy, the unit is in Joe. Important. Don't put your answer in EV unless you refer to table or you refer to orbit table then you have an EV. If not, all your answer will be in Joe. Huh? So from EV, then go back to the equation just now, E equal to C divided by lambda. All right. So on, you just substitute. Depends on which case you have. So this case, you already have the frequency. Do you have the frequency? No, you need to find the frequency. You have the energy value, you have the Planck constant, so you use the uh, this form. Huh? You use E equal to frequency times the Planck value. And you get this one. You get frequency in hertz. Huh? This is S minus one, you get in hertz. Okay, so you get 
5, 10 power 14 hertz. Of course, if you, if you answer, you put in 0 0.45, 10 power negative 15 hertz, also you get correct answer. Uh, Ken, uh, minimum two, minimum two decimal place, maximum three. So you get, if you give a 4.56, also give you correct. But if you write 4.6, then wrong. Uh, okay, if your answer is 4.6, then it's wrong because I need two decimal place. Okay, see, wave length. So wave length means you extend another one. Uh. You use a E equal to C divided by lambda H, that one. C, you memorize, C equal to 3, 10 power something. 10 power 8. You substitute, la. substitute the value, you get lambda. Yeah, substitution, la. I won't give you the steps. Answer, just to check We're during your revision. Lambda equal to 5, 6, 5, 9 nanometer. Then, once you get the frequency, you get the wavelength, then energy absorbed. So this one, again, the two statement. To answer D, write the two statement, delta E, positive, energy absorbed. Uh, delta E, negative, when energy released. So check back, you get the energy negative just now. So it is energy released. Or emitted, la, or emitted. Then what series does it belong? Based on the numbers, again, use back this one. Is four within the normal series. All right? Because it's four two, and two is bomber. And basically, this one is just a free marks. La, if you know what is the meaning of all these names. The statement already give you already, it stopped at two, so it, it will be bomber. Right? Uh, responder to red light. How do you know red light? You refer to the spectrum. So you have the frequency, lambda, energy. So on the spectrum, uh, you will see either you can check wavelength or frequency, both same. So this one is in, uh, we use lambda. Lambda is 659 nano. So 400, 500, 600, 5 is about here. A is in the red visible light. So this is in section C lah, in the question. Okay. We will continue uh, the repulsive or attractive force uh, in our next lecture. Okay.